All right, everyone, I guess YouTube now has a policy where the Priority Creators Club, they're buffing it up by paying celebrities to come to the platform and make videos. At this point, does YouTube want dumbasses on the platform? Because anybody who's had a career, famous for being famous, like a Paris Hilton deal, <laughs> Kardashians, or whether it's some talent, they're a singer, you know, rock star, an athlete or something. If they haven't been utilizing YouTube, considerably sized as the platform is, for a number of years now that it's been mainstream popular. It's, it's been a mainstream thing now for 10 years. Uh, it's been an intrinsic part of the internet now for more than half a decade. If during that period a person had not already created a YouTube channel and begun to make occasional content for their fans, do you think that they make the kind of good business decisions that YouTube would want to bring them to the platform and have them get a, a seat at the high table with Susan, <laughs> so to speak? That's a bad strategy. It's also a very bad look optically for YouTube. YouTube had an advantage for a long time in that a lot of people that use the platform semi-regularly considered themselves, they literally self-took on the title YouTuber. I did too. I considered myself a member of an intrinsic community, did my work on it, I strived to make it continuously better, to make more of it, to draw more people in. YouTube had a, a fan base, a hardened fan base that would have literally gone out and picketed if YouTube had been endangered, numbering at least in the many millions, probably in the tens of millions. They've pissed that away because the native YouTuber audience, which made the platform what it is, caused it to grow, put their time and blood and tears into it, so to speak, is now completely alienated. They're seeing their ad revenue shrink, their friends get banned by algorithms and it takes days to reinstate them. They're seeing all sorts of problems on the site that aren't being addressed. The death of Hangouts. The death of the ability to stream with multiple people without setting up some cockamamie encoder uh, alone is a problem on the platform. I'm glad that the ability to stream on your own is still there, but, you know, it's going to make it difficult for me to set up my election show come 2020. I guess I'm going to have to do a hell of a lot of test streams because <laughs> before it was basically click this button, fill in the info. Oh, you're live. It's wonderful. It was very, very easy and you could simply share the link out. No problem. For some reason, YouTube decided that this extremely simplistic, very effective system that so many people use, they should strip it off the site. We see all sorts of problems. YouTube, meanwhile, is willing to give apparently, supposedly six-figure totals, and I bet in some cases it's more than that, to celebrities to make a YouTube video. How on earth does this pay for itself, by the way? It doesn't make any sense. These are the people, it's like the CNN and all the legacy media outlets. YouTube literally had to bury their opponents, promote their content cross-platform, trending, up next, related videos, preferable search rankings and everything, and they still are losers. They're still not bringing anything new to the platform. It's just the same people now switching and using their time on those channels instead, and it's still a drop in the bucket. Some, some person sets up a webcam and is perfectly capable of, deal, of, of having to compete with CNN and Fox News. I'm still able to draw in an audience every day, totaling 200, 250,000 views, sometimes three or 400,000, uh, gaining new subscribers, still growing cross-platform all across the internet. I'm managing to do that despite the fact that YouTube has pretty much heaped nothing but abuse on my content. I'm not really that visible anymore in search. Despite the fact that I'm ahead of some of these smaller media competitors, they're much more visible. They're even promoted. YouTube's not going to promote me. YouTube's not going to promote most of you. So there are so many problems. And YouTube wants to alienate people further by making it clear that they value these celebrities. Look, why don't you pay, why don't you give me $100,000 to make my next YouTube video? Why shouldn't you be paying uh, all of the other people that are actually getting 99% of the views on the site? Most of the people, if you looked at the top, let's say 10 or 100,000 YouTubers, like channels, how many of those are strictly speaking primarily YouTubers? Most of them. They're not, they weren't famous before YouTube. If anything, maybe they're, they're an e-celeb in a more general sense. Maybe they also do the Instagram thing, or they also do the Facebook thing, or they also do Twitch gaming streams or something. But again, they're either primarily, or in a secondary fashion, a YouTuber, while primarily being an online persona. They're not a, a celebrity of the 80s. They're not some TV star from, from 1995. 
They're not some sitcom spokesperson. They're not a mainline athlete. They're somebody who did their own thing, who created and who was innovative and, and independent. That should be rewarded. If a site literally built from the ground up by independent creators is not going to reward independent content creation and instead would rather piss away their, their money generated by their effort to Will Smith and Katy Perry, that's a sad statement about the site. YouTube took what could have been the largest hardened core audience, the most loyal brand users and creators in the world, in history, has taken that advantage that it had five years ago or six years ago and has dumped it in the toilet and it's preparing to flush it. They are very, very close to losing all brand loyalty because the majority, when I go around YouTube, the majority of significant creators, not just in politics, not just in current events or in news analysis, but across the entire platform, the majority of people are at least mildly annoyed at the direction in which YouTube is going. Left, right, and center, older users and younger users, male, female, and Tumblr gendered. Everybody is at least a little bit pissed off. The LGBT stuff from years ago, I was talking about it last night with V. That's a big issue too. YouTube has never fully addressed this. It's just ignoring these issues and letting them pile up. The new creator studio, it's less functional than the old one. Getting rid of Hangouts for absolutely no reason for multi-person streams. Uh, uh, algorithmic manipulation of search results. At this point, uh, new studies came out, I think Tim Pool linked to this a while ago, a few weeks, uh, showing that disproportionately it was detrimentally affecting left-wing channels. I can believe it, because again, who's gonna talk about gay rights more habitually? Who's gonna be talking about sensitive topics like abortion or racists? People on the left, well, when you're using those tags and those hashtags and putting those words in the description and talking about them and the AI is listening to your video and trying to decipher what you're saying with roughly 95% accuracy, you're going to get shadow banned. You're going to get demonetized and it's going to happen over and over. This is the direction that YouTube has decided to go in and it's the wrong direction. You're taking people who primarily considered themselves YouTubers before anything else, at least on the internet. Like myself, five years ago, what do you do basically for a living? I, I'm a YouTuber who happens to edit some books. Now I'm an author and editor who happens to also be, you know, well-known on YouTube, but in a general sense, I'm just a video maker because it's not just YouTube anymore. There's BitChute. Getting up towards 65,000 people on BitChute following my content. That's not minuscule. That's not a minor thing. And there I can actually talk with the person who's in charge of the whole shebang and actually get updates on what's going on and sometimes, sometimes cares about the creator community. There's a community there that is also very hard and on these alt tech sites. Gab comes to mind, with Dissenter and so forth. Minds, certainly Minds.com. All of these different sites are building. They're growing. Uh, and mainline tech, which is now being taken over, I guess, by Will Smith and CNN, uh, is, is at a loss for what to do. Oh well, their loss. If you're willing, if you're crazy enough running a company to take your multi-billion, many billions of dollar brand and piss it down the toilet because you want to get Will Smith to make another stupid video on your platform, or, or you, want, you want Annie Lennox to come aboard to talk about third wave feminism or something, I don't know what to tell you, dude. If you think that that's an appropriate use of money, you're not going to have a website for very long. You will go MySpace's way or end up like Yahoo. It's not impossible. Yahoo was a hegemon. Yahoo was the big search engine for and, and a, a big Yahoo Messenger, Yahoo's email service. It was a big site a long time ago. It crashed and burned because of poor internal decision making. MySpace wasn't an exter anything external that destroyed MySpace. It was MySpace's own. Uh, uh, choices that it made. By the way, Tom, who actually built the site, uh, made out like a bandit. I think he sold it for a hundred million right, be <laughs> right before it collapsed. And now he goes around doing photography and traveling the world. He's like, oh, I got mine. Fuck you. Only under Bernie Sanders' tax plan, he probably owes back taxes more than he's worth. How sad. That's about all. Peace out.